In this video, we're going to go over Chord Pro, which is a key component of Chord Charts in the Worship Tools planning and charts apps. So what is Chord Pro? It's kind of like a blueprint to your final readable chord chart. When we think of chord charts, we think of something like this, where the chords sit above the lyrics. The syllable that the chord sits on top of is very important because it indicates the beat on which you'll hit that chord with your instrument. Now, if you've ever tried to create a chord chart on Word or a similar text-based program, you'll know how frustrating it is to get those beats to line up with the lyrics sometimes. Then once you create the chord chart, you have to save it as a PDF in order to share a clean copy with your team or upload it into a digital music stand app, etc. And now that this song is saved as a PDF, you won't be able to easily modify the sheet anymore, so you can't ever really arrange the song to your liking or change the key on the fly. These are some of the problems that Chord Pro helps to solve. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Chord Pro within the Worship Tools Charts app. To get there, you'll click the song title at the top, then Edit Song and Edit Chord Pro. This is what we call the Chord Pro Editor in the Charts app. There's a similar page like this in our planning app, and this is where you'll make modifications and customizations to your chord charts as needed from service to service or song to song. At a glance, if you're completely new to Chord Pro, this might feel a little bit overwhelming, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually really easy to use, and this video is a great place to start. As we're looking at this Chord Pro, you'll see some different colors here. In green and purple, we have what are called directives or tags. Directives are encased in these curly brackets with a directive on the left, colon, space, and then the relevant information for that directive on the right. For example, looking at this title directive at the top, this tells the Chord Pro renderer that this first line is the title of our song, and it's formatted as curly bracket, title, colon, space, and the name of our song, I Surrender All, and then the closing curly bracket. Looking below that, the rest of the song details have the same exact formatting with the directive on the left and the information on the right. To preview my final chord chart without saving any changes I might have made, I can click this preview button. Here you can see that the directives up until time are here at the top of my chart, and if I scroll down, all my licensing details are down in the footer. Let's go back to the Chord Pro editor. These are generally the fields that you'll want to include in your Chord Pro, so if you need to screenshot this page as a reference for making your Chord Pro, you can go ahead and do that. Otherwise, the bare minimum information that you'll need to include are title, author, and key. Now moving on from the song details, we have our first comment directive. Each verse, chorus, instrumental, bridge, etc. must start with a comment directive. Again, it's formatted just like the directives above, and you'll know that you did it correctly when the directive has the green comment and colon on the left and the purple name of your song section on the right. So this first section is verse 1, this is chorus, and so on. Below that comment, we have the actual chords and lyrics. There's nothing special that you need to do for your lyrics, and they'll show up in your Chord Pro editor in plain black text. But notice that the chords are in straight brackets, and instead of sitting above the lyrics, they actually sit in between the lyrics. In Chord Pro, the lyric syllable that the chord is placed right before is the syllable that the chord will sit above on the rendered chord chart. So this first D chord will sit above all, and the next G over D chord will sit above the G in Jesus. Let's go ahead and look at that preview page again. And there you see the D above all and the G over D above Jesus. If you have a longer verse that you want to split into multiple paragraphs, you can't just simply put a line break here. As I mentioned earlier, every section has to have its own comment directive. So in this case, you'll need to add a new comment and maybe name it verse 1b or whatever you'd like to call it. Another big benefit of Chord Pro is that you can freely rearrange your chart as needed. So for example, let's say your church likes to sing the chorus after every single verse in this song. You can highlight the chorus, including the comment, copy it, and paste it in after each verse. Maybe your church also likes to include an instrumental break between verses 3 and 4. You'll add a comment directive, colon, instrumental, or turnaround, or whatever you'd like to call it, and close the bracket. Enter to create a new line, and this time you don't actually need to put in your lyrics. Just enter your chords, making sure that each chord has its own brackets. If you'd like to include count markers, you can actually do that right inside the brackets, like this. Let's go ahead and save this Chord Pro. Now, in my service set list, I have my edited chord chart with all those extra choruses and my instrumental break. From here, I can open the song menu and change the key with a simple click of a button. Keep in mind that this doesn't change the key of D as written in the Chord Pro, but it will change the key on the rendered chart for you and your team as you are viewing and playing it. Some other benefits of having designed this chart in Chord Pro format, you can toggle between one and two columns, view the chords in numbers, adjust the tempo for your metronome, and change the font size and color in your chart settings. 
Now, if you don't have access to an existing chord profile to get you started, you can always create one from scratch. If you have lyrics available saved on the song, the editor will go ahead and automatically insert those lyrics into the editor. So all you need to do is enter in the chords where they need to go with the brackets. If you don't have access to lyrics, this is a great opportunity to practice making your own chord pro from scratch. You only need to make it once per song and you'll have that song and chord pro saved in your worship tools library for use in all your future services. If you need a little more help with Chord Pro as you're getting started, check out the support docs on our website. We have a series of articles and videos specifically about Chord Pro, so you can reference those as you learn the ropes. And if you ever get stuck or run into issues with your Chord Pro, feel free to contact us at support at with a screenshot of your Chord Pro and we'll be happy to take a look.